at a time where there's more than 20,000 people that have lost their lives. Um, 100,000 plus that have been affected by this tragedy. Instead of showing sympathy to the victims, instead of showing humanity, these, you know, Charlie Hebdo and, and people in France and other places have been making caricatures and cartoons mocking them. And what's interesting is this is done under the guise of free speech, talking about, well, we believe that you can mock anything. You, you, we believe in having freedom of speech. But I challenge them, the same cartoonists, the same magazine, to go make a cartoon then about the, the Holocaust. In Austria, till today, I was there myself, it is illegal for you to even question whether the Holocaust happened or not. And again, we as Muslims, we're not saying that this is our stance. We're just saying that if you are going to talk about freedom of speech, then why is hate speech a thing? Why can you be arrested for hate speech? And how is this not hate speech when you curse the Prophet who is more beloved to us than our own parents? Right? This, is a, this is a disgusting show of trying to get attention of the misery of others. That at a time where more than 20,000 have lost their lives when we're still digging the dead and the alive out of the, 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 the rubble of an earthquake, you're mocking them. You're saying we don't need bombs because we just hope that the people of Syria and Turkey are dead one way or the other. How disgusting is that? And where are the politicians standing up? Where, are the, where, are the, where is the human right appeal? And where are Amnesty International? And where is all these organizations that talk? Where's that little girl from Sweden that you know, was all up in arms about things? Where, where's their disgust? Of? Silence, it seems like. Huh? Nobody's saying anything. This is the, the hypocrisy. If you, if you use an anti-Semitic term, and, and we condemn that. We don't, we don't condone anti-Semitism. If somebody uses a racist term against... Um, African Americans, we condemn that. We in America, we realize that's hate speech. You can be arrested, you can be, and if you use threatening language, you can be put in jail for it, just for words. But when people use that against Muslims, then there's nothing. You know, there's laws in many countries against burning flags. You can be arrested and put in jail for burning the flag of a country. But when somebody's burning something more dear to us than a flag, the Quran, People say, well, that's freedom of speech. It's a double standard. It's not fair. You know, when you talk, when you even question the policies of a particular country called Israel, you'll be called an anti-Semite, even though you're just questioning the politics of a country. Right? Uh, Arabs are Semitic people, you know, so I don't know how you can call them anti-Semites, right? But when you, when you attack a people, when you wish for their destruction, when you burn their holy scriptures, when you mock their prophet, when you call for their death, like these people from Charlie Hebda have done, whether through bombs or natural disasters, silence. Why? Why? That's the big question. To that. If you look at Where's your the heart? sickness of the hearts, the sickness of the heart, it blinds the eyes, Yep. it deafens the ears, it covers the intellect, because the sickness, it begins in the heart. And it goes back, don't the cure for it is the Quran. Yeah, if you see people, for example, Jeffrey Dahmer who was eating children and things, and you look at serial killers and mass murderers, and you think, how could they do this? And then you realize that it's because their heart was diseased. Mm -hmm. When you don't have a morality that is set through divine laws, then everybody defines their own morality. You know, where are the lines then? We as Muslims, we have the Quran. We have the guidance from the words of Allah. We have the sunnah. We have what the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, taught us. So you can mock all you want in this life. You can, you can make any kind of cartoon. You can burn whatever. You can make jokes. You can use your double standards. But in the end, you're going to go back to Allah and you're going to stand in front of Allah and you're going to give your account. No. There's no other place to go. So this is why as Muslims, we want good for everybody. We don't want to see these people, even from Charlie Hebdo, or these people burning the Qur'an, or Islamophobes. May Allah guide them. May Allah we don't want to see them in the hellfire. We want mm -hmm. them to be in Jannah with us. But the path to Jannah is Tawheed, is to belief in the one Creator, mm -hmm. is to accept the Qur'an, the words of Allah, to accept the Prophet of the last Prophet, 
Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. And that's what we call everybody towards, is to believe in that one creator, the same one that Abraham and Moses and Jesus and Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon all of them believed in, and to submit. That's what Muslim is, we submit ourselves. And I want to just make this point in the end. We, for our brothers and sisters in, in Turkey and in Syria and Lebanon and everywhere that is affected by this calamity, we feel your pain. Mm -hmm. And we are with you in this. And for those that are out there in those countries, and we know there are non-Muslims that live in those countries that are going through those hardships, we feel your pain as well. We, we feel that as uh, part of the same human family that originated from the same Adam and Eve that we all come from. And we want good for everybody. And as Muslims, and as we've been seeing news reports for the Muslims in Turkey and other places, for non-Muslims that were there, that got caught up, that, were, that are helping them just as they're helping any Muslim in that calamity, we want to make sure we preserve and protect life. Preserve and protect life.